What's up guys, Mike here, the Detroit Borg, with a quick look at the Apple Pencil. This is an iPad Pro only accessory, which retails for $99. This is far more than just a capacitive stylus. The Apple Pencil and iPad Pro are designed to work together. The iPad Pro incorporates a new precision touchscreen, while the Apple Pencil uses pressure and angle sensors. This gives apps a lot of data to work with to recreate virtual pencils, pens, markers, paintbrushes, erasers, and far more. Now, unboxing the Apple Pencil is a little like unboxing an Apple Watch. Once the plastic is removed, we'll find the tab along the side so we can slide out the tray. First thing we'll see is a packet containing some of the included accessories and literature. First up, we have a lightning adapter, which allows us to recharge the Apple Pencil with a standard lightning cable, but more on this later. We also have a replacement pencil nib, so if the one installed wears out with heavy use, you have a replacement. Also included is a quick start guide outlining the basics of using and charging the Apple Pencil. We also get some regulatory and warranty papers with it. And lastly, we have our plastic wrapped Apple Pencil cradled in the box with a tab to free it. Pulling on this we can remove the plastic and take a close look at the pencil. Like many Apple products, the pencil is made out of glossy, hard, white plastic. It's roughly the same size as a conventional pencil and feels nicely weighted. Toward the top, we'll find our Apple branding and a cap, which hides the lightning connector for charging the internal battery. The connector is elongated to work with the iPad Pro's silicone case if you have that installed. Now, if you look really closely, you also see the model number and serial number etched on the connector itself. The cap is held on magnetically and snaps into place fairly easy, but feels a little loose when you're gripping the pencil toward the top. The nib also has the same shape and geometry of a traditional graphite pencil. The nib simply twists off to reveal the tiny sensors underneath that measures pressure and angle. Incidentally, the Apple Pencil is weighted to one side so that it doesn't roll off the table, which also makes sure that the Apple Pencil branding is always facing upwards. The Apple Pencil is a Bluetooth device and needs to be paired to your iPad Pro to work. This is done simply by connecting the Lightning connector to your iPad Pro. You'll be prompted to agree to the pairing and you're all set to go. The Apple Pencil is also quickly recharged using the Lightning port on your iPad Pro, so there's no need to change the battery or keep a separate cable around for charging. Once fully charged, the Apple Pencil is good for about 12 hours of continuous use. Now, once completely depleted, a 15 second quick charge through the iPad will get you 30 minutes of use. Alternatively, you can use the included adapter to use a conventional lightning cable or even an iPhone dock. You can also monitor the battery life through the battery widget in the notification panel of the iPad by swiping down. The Apple Pencil can be used to interact with most aspects of the interface, but certain gestures like swiping from the edges to bring up the notification panel, control center, or windowing doesn't work with the pencil. The pen the pencil is mostly here for tasks that require more precise control and input, such as sketching or painting. An app already designed to work with the Apple Pencil is the included notes app. You can handwrite notes or draw on the screen with a limited selection of digital tools. The iPad Pro and Apple Pencil combo includes excellent palm rejection, so you can rest your palm directly on the display without interference. Now, when it comes to handwriting on the glass panel, it is a little strange here, but the Apple Pencil actually does this pretty well, thanks to the friction provided by the nib, which recreates some of the friction of writing or drawing on paper. What you won't find, unfortunately, on the iPad Pro is a handwriting keyboard, so handwriting on the iPad Pro can only go so far. Now, when it comes to drawing, the Apple Pencil detects pressure and tilt, which is used in countless ways depending on the app or digital tools you've selected. Now, in the Notes app, you can see how the stroke of the line changes as you press harder or lighter on the pencil. Changing the angle allows you to widen the stroke for shading, and the combination of these gestures work together to digitally recreate the real world nearly seamlessly. You can also use your finger to interact with the display at the same time, and the display treats each input differently so it knows the difference. Now, there are more powerful apps that give you far more tools to work with and recreate any number of utensils and materials from oil paints to countless brushes and other tools. One of the best apps for pros right now on the iPad Pro is Procreate, which is only $6 in the App Store, and that app can take full advantage of the hardware and really exercise its capabilities. Unfortunately, I have none of the artistic abilities to fully demonstrate the capabilities of this hardware combination, which brings me to my next point. The Apple Pencil is only a value add if you're an artist or visual creator, like a photo editor. There's probably no better hardware combo for artists and creators right now than the iPad Pro with the Apple Pencil. For some, the Apple Pencil may seem oversized, but for me, it fits my hand comfortably, and its size means it can be used to replicate other utensils like a paintbrush. My only real concern right now with the Apple Pencil is that it seems to be causing fairly significant scratching on the glass. This is likely due to dust or grit being trapped between the tip of the pencil and the glass, and sometimes you can actually hear the grit grinding against the glass, which is not a good sound. So my only precaution is to make sure you keep your screen and pencil tip clean as possible during use. 
All right, guys, so that's going to do for me in this quick video. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to let me know, and I'll see you again in the next video.